Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome all to the Verizon VCT Game Changer Series number two here in North America. Funny and oddly enough, usually you'd see both of us already in a studio like two days later or four days later, but Dan Dryan and Van Silly on the mic today to be hosting, analyzing, casting, and tagging in for players and friends that seem to have like <laughs> internet issues with like the weather and everything like that as well. But hopefully you all have fun with us. Dan Dryan, welcome to the stream today. Welcome to the cast and uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm excited for the matches today. I'm very excited for their first match. You know, we're going to just get there, but I'm also excited to be working on the event. Yeah, it's been a while since we actually worked together as a as, ca as a casting pair. Casting, yeah. uh, I had a chance to, yeah, to have you as my translator for the first time when we were uh, interviewing Shy there for the LCQ for the VCTs. But you know what? Let's talk about the VCTs and the LCQ a little bit later. That's happening this week. And let's focus on what we have today here. And basically, over into the open qualifiers, I just got to give a shout out to all the teams so far that have signed up to actually play in the gauntlet dread, dreadful open qualifier gauntlet until we got here now i think we have like a 64 team bracket double elimination actually maybe even a little bit more than 64 teams because they were meeting up with other teams uh, of course in terms of uh you know the powerhouses that are currently waiting on the sidelines such as version one such as phase but currently this is what we have so far with some of the teams moving forward here as we take a look at the upper bracket then and you'll start to recognize those teams that last week were just waiting for the chance to play or were only playing the last couple days. Right now, you're seeing your version ones, your phase, like you mentioned, uh, a DSG that we got to see actually day one, an exit, and those, all, all those known teams and organizations that have been part of Game Changers with yeah. a mix of, of the new ones that are just getting into the scene. Yeah, exactly. And and there's going to be a lot of games happening at the same time today. Uh, on the mainstream today, at least, we're going to have DSG versus FlyQuest because, of course, it can't be a Valorant stream without any of the clout matches, right? I mean, we had a Sentinels and Hunter Thieves just a couple of days ago. Now it's time for DSG and FlyQuest. I think these are two well-known organizations. Of course, DSG being a little bit newer. Uh, but before we start talking about these teams, I also want to make sure that you follow at least over at the Knights on Twitter, Knights, uh, Knights GG rather, so they could actually tweet out all the other streams that are happening simultaneously so you know and hopefully could follow your favorite teams until we actually, of course, get into one mainstream uh, once we get into the top eight and to, into the playoffs. Uh, that said, DSG versus FlyQuest, uh, we wanted this match. We, we talked about this uh, being yeah. a, a, a clouded game, right, Dan Dryad? So, oh, by the way, Dan Dryad, I'm going to keep saying Dan Dryad for the, whole, uh, for the whole cast. So hopefully you're going to enjoy that for today. For sure, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, like you said, the match is a good one. It's one that I really wanted to see. We got to see DSG on day one when they were playing uh, those open qualifier teams. Mm -hmm. And I really liked what I see. I think the main topic of conversation was Katarina, a player yes. that we've known since you know last year. She was part of Game Changers. This first Game Changers that we had a couple months ago, she didn't play, but now she's back in the game and she's supported by an amazing team of the perfect mix with experience like Hannah and the new players coming through uh, like on stable and i feel like it's been a really good mix i'm excited to see it especially when you have FlyQuest on the other side yeah i think this is a whole different roster from what we've seen in the past of course the first time throughout the game changers series one in the open qualifiers uh that has got to be the most clouded roster that we had actually for uh the v steam game changers in north america we're thinking about the kaides uh tupperware and the rest of the roster that you know had a pretty decent run but not to take away and shy away from what we currently had from the past but when you're looking at this roster today here you talked about it in terms of the experience dan Dryad. this is a, a team that's looking to turn some uh, turn faces and potentially even have a deep run I definitely believe it, and I said it day one. This is a team that has a lot of potential. They played three matches so far. One was a little bit closer against Breakthrough, but they were still able to get that win. And I really like what they're doing, right? Because when you're seeing these compositions, when you're seeing what they're playing, they're playing the double duelist. Sometimes they bring yeah. the Yoru. Sometimes they, they bring the Reyna. They have a little bit of everything. And when we talked uh, in the post-match interview with the coach, Moonchopper, uh, or uh, with the coach, the one thing that he was saying was that uh, the main thing that they wanted to do was to give that balance between content and having mm -hmm. fun, but also making sure that that content is also giving them that win. 
Yeah, for sure. And GC2 for uh, so far for disguised GC for the Game Changers team has been looking pretty good. Yes, dropping a map against Breakthrough GC, but I think just in general, even we had an opportunity to just like talk to some of the talent that was hanging out here at the VCTs in the Americas with the, even the Latin, uh, the Latam, sorry, and uh, the the Brazilian casters and. We're all actually pretty impressed about how much the competition has stepped up from yep. GC1 from last year until today. So I don't think that seeing a team like such as DSG that has been big, uh, built from, you know, uh, again, from scratch, but looking very good with a clouded roster and a star duelist like Katarina, they're still going to lose some mass because there are some tough games. But let's let's shift our focus then over to who they're playing up against here for today. This is going to be FlyQuest. Uh, I don't think it's a FlyQuest Game Changers. It's just a FlyQuest Valorant team. And for them, they've been a roster that's been around for a little bit of a time. You know, there's a core of them that's been playing, if I'm not mistaken, even with the TSM days. But I think where they really started making their mark was looking at uh, playing as CLG Red, for example. Emily being yes. one of these players. But CLG Red. Uh, we're always a team that were like, you know, getting the fourth place with the Dignitas or whatnot, and they're really never really able to break into that top two uh, and and toppling teams like Shopify Rebellion or uh, Cloud9 White back then. But when you see a team like CLG Red that has, you know, d been unfortunately dropped with the, the CLG operations, but still wanted to work very hard, got picked up by Moist Moguls for that for that run, and of course the Emily clutch that we saw in Split before during that run, uh, they've found a new home here with FlyQuest and they're continuing their reign. It's very sweet, the story that the players, the core team has had, where they've gone through different homes, they've gone through different <laughs> organizations, and yet you see that this core is staying together and always giving results. Like you said, it's not the top two, the top one that they've been able to accomplish just yet, but I think it's a team that everybody has always talked about, and you recognize players like Athena uh, yeah. that have been very vocal. I think everybody in the, in the team just sees her even like as a, as a mother figure for the team and everybody kind <laughs> of looking up to her in that sense so i really like the, the connection for them i remember one of their interviews as well talking about uh their decision to stay together uh, no matter what when the clg uh, stuff was happening so yeah. now it's, it's great to see them in a, and i'm really excited to see how far they're gonna get i i'm never gonna let that pass big when when i hear athena being the mother figure for our team because i remember casting her when she was starting up in the tactical fps scene uh with a different game and i was still like trying to make my name in, in that scene as well and i was like holy crap now Athena has become the veteran, and then I realized, oh wait, yeah. I've become a grandpa. I'm 39 already, <laughs> and then I'm just like seeing all the young guns come in and, and just owning so far in the server here within Valorant. But of course, uh, yes, this is going to look very good in terms of can she lead a team to upset a team like DSG today? The reason why I'm going to say upset, even though for FlyQuest have been a, a, a group for a long time, this player right here in his head-to-head -head against Dodo Nut is Katarina. And she is such a difficult player to play against it, uh, with. I think I remember her stints like subbing in or trying out for version one at some point and just dropping some huge numbers uh, until she decided to take a break. But now she makes a return and she's still dominating the servers, Dad. Try it. Yeah, Karina, <laughs> it, it is. Oh, God. You messed up now. You have to do <laughs> I love it. Uh, Katarina is, is an amazing player. She was part of version 1 for a little bit, then she went into content creation for version 1. Uh, she left and now she's part of the DSG uh, playing for this team. And again, being that mix between the, the content, uh, she's also a streamer, a very popular streamer. A lot yes. of people like myself, enjoy watching her. And uh, uh, But also, you know, mixing that content with uh, the professional play that we're seeing in Game Changers. And on the other side, Dotternut, I think has always been a topic of conversation yes. of one of the best duelists that we have in Game Changers. I think it's amazing to see her play. I remember a lot of the race plays from last year that oh, we're yes. just starting to see now. Yeah, and uh, of course, I wanted to mention the Emily with the Omen before, but I think even that's changed now from what they played before from Game Changers Series 1 to Game Changers Series 2. And I'm I'm intri intrigued, actually, to know what compositions are going to come out with for Game Changers 2, uh, as we're going to get over and watch here the uh, map picks and bands. Uh, I'm actually looking at this right now and see FlyQuest pick and split. I think this is pretty straight to the point. Uh, they always had a very good split for FlyQuest, but there's anything else in here that piques your interest and that pops out when you're looking at this, Dan. 
Oh, right the, the first thing that I'm thinking of is this pearl that we're going to be seeing first. Okay. Uh, and the reason why it catches my attention is because we've seen a little bit of it from this side of DSG. They're bringing mm -hmm. this double duelist with the Yoru and this yeah. jet. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I feel like now is, is a real chance to see how it's going to get contested against a FlyQuest that is more, more, more likely than not going to play that standard composition uh, on Pearl. So mm -hmm. I'm excited how this matchup is going to go. And I, I want to see a DSG at this point being pushed to their boundaries a little bit, seeing how they're going to adapt with this composition and, and seeing why they want to bring this out too. Yeah, and if it gets to a point there that we get to a third map, this is a map that was played as well throughout this series uh, for the Game Changer Series 2 in North America uh, on Haven. Uh, and we haven't seen anything yet from DSG, but I'm assuming that this is going to be something that's fairly standard from both of their teams. I'm actually very intrigued because unfortunately, uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to really have a look at what DSG brought to the table on Pearl if they want to keep their Jet and their Yoru in this composition. But I think that this is going to be uh, a fun way to try to understand the play cell around that because that means that you're going to have potentially a, a, an interesting initiator follow up with it if it's I don't think you're going to have a KO because you're going to need to find some like um, some droning around that as well, right? And if Sova that has made a mark recently on Pearl with other teams such as, I don't know, I'm going to think here, uh, what's that team? It's in the Pacifics. Why am I having a brain fart? It's Bleed, <laughs> the one that actually moved up to the VCTs there. Uh, they actually brought out that that Silva, right? And you thought that I liked Alf. You thought that I had a Storm too, but no, it's I'm not like Sierra Don. <laughs> not right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so they brought out a, a Silva in that composition, but it's it, it, you're going to miss flashes at that point. But I guess that's where you're going to have a Euro in this composition as well. Uh, how, how do you see this 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 map being played out with this with this team? It's interesting too. I mean, we saw it on day one and the Yoru, it was a little bit of a mix of something that we saw maybe from last year, Evil Geniuses, when they were playing yeah. this Yoru. And that was kind of the main idea. It felt though that we couldn't really see as much, which is why I'm interested to see how this is going to develop mm -hmm. more uh, when they get contested by a team like FlyQuest, right? And yeah. also another point though, is this composition, we weren't even too sure if it's going to be the one that are going to play mm -hmm. until maybe the very end of the game changers because it can change. Uh, DSG has also been playing a lot with the Reyna and the Reyna we've seen in Pacific a little bit. The yeah. Reyna we also saw from the DSG challengers team mm -hmm. uh, just a couple months ago. So there is that possibility too. Uh, and the main thing again that they talked about is making sure that they're having fun, that they're bringing these unique compositions. So I feel like that is going to be what we're going to be seeing across the board. Though I still don't know if it's going to be the Yoru that we saw on day <laughs> one that is still going to be here today. I, I also still remember uh, even like he had G2 goes in with Juliana on, on that map on Pearl before even going into Arena uh, in their comp. I think yeah. it was the first map that they played was against C9 White, where they where she actually brought out the Yoru. And I think if you want to have a look at what this Yoru brings to the table, is a lot about those fast rotates, uh, not only on defense, but to get it behind enemy lines to be not only the entry fragger, but then the late lurk right after, as soon as you have a pulse plant, right? Because you yes. could just set a TP somewhere, try to get behind enemy lines, and then you become flanker, clutcher, and then the rest. Well, you're gonna have to see what they're gonna have to do here in terms of. I don't think. I don't think with this composition, you would really want to play in like a a, a pulse plant. Uh, meta or post plant style because we just mentioned two of those five agents or double duelists with a jet and a Yuru. That doesn't scream utility for me that you could use uh, in a post plant situation. Uh, and even just recently, actually, Heretics over in EMEA, uh, you have Mixwell that actually pulled out the Yuru and he had some really nice little trap plays that he played for himself. Oh. And we're going to stop talking about actually, <laughs> you know, a Yuru because we're going to go the Scream style. Unstable pulling out the Phoenix this time around for DSG, which I don't think is a bad pick with the amount of retakes and clearing potential that I just saw Scream do today over in EMEA. It's a, it's a Phoenix pick that we've seen a couple teams wanting to bring. Some of them stop, some of them continue to play it, right? Uh, I think one of the first times that we saw it being played constantly was actually uh, by Cloud9 in VCT Americas when it was Celsius playing this Phoenix. That's true, and yes. It, it, it showed to be very viable in a lot of scenarios. Now with this double duelist, I think it's a perfect mix and it is exactly what we were talking about. We knew it was potentially going to be something like this, something mm -hmm. fun. We didn't know if it was going to be the Yor that was going to be kept, maybe a Reina, but instead it's the Phoenix. And I think now 
uh, you see kind of the perfect balance between what this team wants to bring, wants to show to the audience that like to watch them, but also uh, the, the possibilities that you have with the Phoenix too. Yeah, well, this is going to be a definitely a very interesting composition for uh, DSG versus FlyQuest Red. Now let's throw it back to our casters. Hey, thank you so much, Van Silly. So Van Silly said... <laughs> no, so let, let's focus at least over to FlyQuest now. Uh, this seems to be a little bit more standard as you see the double uh, controller being played with the sky. There's a jet uh, into that as well. But this is what's interesting. Once again, looking back at DSG side here, Dandryad, there's actually no real pulse plant utility outside of the grab well and the nano swarms, right? So you have the lace for that as DSG starts on the attack. But we'll see if this is going to be more aggression towards the spawn instead as they're working their way towards this A side. And it's going to be yeah, interesting to see how this new composition is going to play out for the set of DSG right away. That guiding light coming through. Double flash into the nine. Maybe the possibility for that push coming through. Three players though for Flycos with there and ready. Yeah, this is quite interesting. The high tide was weighted a little bit longer by Emily. They wanted to go for some sort of a trap play when the orb was going to get picked up. But as they finally decide to pop through, they realize now that DSG has fallen back, pivoting now towards this B site, which then now also allows FlyQuest to pivot more defenses towards middle. And the only one and the closest one here is going to be that Viper, right? There's the Viper wall. The only one up close as everybody else from Mr. FlyQuest making that rotation to and towards Link. Yeah, the dash already comes in. Yeah. Trailblazer also spots Athena. She's already Oops. stunned by that, and first bloods are being drawn by DSG. And Katarina, doesn't matter if she's sick, because she's going to drop some sick kills right there. Leaving only two players alive. Four flag was being doted on, and it not on. Spike gets planted on the attack. The crossbar is being set up. One of the players just spotted by Katarina, and the second one just shows her shoulder right there. That's Dodonut trying to move three. forward. Double swing across. A line up here, allowing Dodonut to get two kills. Back to a two versus one. Disadvantage for Dodonut. The dash has been activated, but this is the long range play style. There's no Nana Swarm on that spike yet, but Hana's playing just around the corner. Clearing back in the front of the billboard. A tap on the spike. The first swing up for Misu, but DSG scores first. And he got really close, right? I One of the two players swinging different. from balls. I had the feeling that that was what Dodono was going to get away with murder right at the end. The two kills. And trying to get that clutch right at the end for the team, but the rest of the players position towards long. Go for the swing at the same time. Shut down that chance and give the round here for the side of DSG. Uh, looking good as well. And, and something that, that caught my attention when I got to see them the first day is their ability to be be flexible with these calls if they have to rotate if they're going to play around that information that they gather early on that's how the play is going to go and that's how they were getting those wins so far yeah it's ready you see the pressure that DSG is focusing on as you mentioned it dendrite the this phoenix coming through there's a lot of ults that can get farmed and the play style that you have from DSG from the get-go is always adding that pressure early nano swarms and grab well just to farm this up for unstable who they already have the ult ready Massive too. One of the things that you definitely want to do when you have a Phoenix in your composition, right? Is trying to farm those orbs, trying to get that run it back. And that's going to give you so much info, potentially even a couple kills. But the info itself, just to get into the site, is going to be crucial for the amount of times that we might be seeing this ultimate coming through. It's also a stack on down. this second round, right? All five players for FlyQuest towards that B side. And the hit coming through on A. Mind games being done by, DS by DSG, rather falling back when the high tide came up on the defense and they just waited for a bit for FlyQuest. Like, oh, maybe it's just pissed around once again. But you could definitely see it. The questions are starting to get answered, at least this time around. Look at the post plant positioning here from DSG. Getting that spike on the side, this is something that's been happening a lot with teams that haven't been playing post plant utility with, for example, that Sova, with the Nano Storms from the Killjoy, or with a KO, for example, if you're M80. So there's a lot of these plants where you can set up the crossfire now from the front of a main and fighting towards the back of secret just to prevent all the players from or, or at least the defenders not from rotating back to spawn so something that has yet to be identified by flight quest because they're just coming back from the rotate all will die from the spike not allowing any orbs to get picked up which is actually another very good thing as well uh to not allow these to come up quite early for at least katarina who would have been half halfway to her blaze storms 
And the ultimate here, the running back, gets to be kept for this next round. The rifle as well, the Vandal in hands on Unstable is going to be there. But like you said, I think the post plan is really interesting. Uh, we've seen how much that secret, the dugout position, gets contested, uh, depending on the composition, and even early on for the defense, as sometimes they like to position themselves there. This guy is very early on, very proactive on this area. Three players stacked in and waiting to see if the swing was going to happen. Might be something that we see in the future around as well as uh, always a push towards mid that we see for fly quest turrets are been set up now it's the it actually forces out the alarm but quite early for hannah as well so that's a lot of that kg utility that's gonna prevent the flank from being watched at a longer distance and already also wasting out aggressive utility from lazy out lion as they're looking to clear out towards that front of mid pushing back fly quest who's looking to pivot back towards this a side Oh, the first initiation is going to come through. Flash to flash, a stalemate. Oh, now coming through. A curveball outside through the smoke. Holy blind Emily. And that's a nice kill for free ult. And then DSG just closing in until FlyQuest sets up that crossfire and drops everybody, leaving a two on two situation. With Misu trying to flank around, force it back. Gonna try to catch her off guard, but it not on, ready for that. Low HP, but still strong enough to support her teammate. As Athena so moves down towards, yeah, the, the art side, but that health is not even needed from Midnight Han. Athena will get that kill. And FlyQuest, they're winning their gun round. Just waiting to go for the swing right at the end. And, and another idea that we get to see this time around for FlyQuest on the defense. Oh, four of the players actually trying to go in, being proactive towards Link, having to back up at the end. And, and this is interesting because when DSG was playing against Van Lin, Van Lin attempted to do this defense setup early on a couple times. Every single time, though, it was getting this shut down by fun. Katarina. That, uh, the one player that we saw ready to see if the push was going to come through and ends up being backed up. But one of that you have to be scared of once again, very aggressive this time around towards B-Long. Yeah. Very aggressive and very interesting how they play it too, right? Watch if you tell you once again, you, do you want to fight the orb back against DSG? So they're doing a great job to cancel that, not allowing Unstable to pick up these orbs. As DSG is looking to fight back. Nano Swarm to clear him out. Nebula be pushed through and nice little cascade to allow FlyQuest to pull back and re reposition themselves on defense. Just a contact, that aggression. Healing is Pushes FlyQuest once again to go back. Something that we could continue to see throughout these couple rounds. But once again, DSG playing it slower here. There was mid. Maybe the slowest round. So I've seen from them, it's everything just going in and the Phoenix is going to enable to for this late hit to come through. Yeah. The Phoenix slowly creeping the way up here towards Art. Unstable lead into charge once again. A little bit of utility to allow for them to push forward and break that turret, forcing the rotates to happen. But as you're looking at how FlyQuest is playing, this is three rounds that we've seen left. in the past, now maybe even the fourth, that they're stacking early on different sides, gambling on these. And as you hear the footsteps coming through from Athena now, she's gonna just have to stay alive and wait for the rotate to come back. So your entry fragger now becomes the lurk. So a similar responsibility here, Dendriad. Instead of having the Euro lurk in the late rounds, it's now unstable as a Phoenix hey, moving through with support from Katarina to get that first pick. And this is not something that you have to do every single time, right? But it looks perfect right now yeah. for DSG. Yes. One by one, Han actually trying to put a pie and getting three. The Seeker 2 is a 1v1 on Unstable. Oh my, that was... Oh. I saw that coming. I saw that coming when that Seeker came out, but unfortunately for her, for it not on Unstable, had another curveball. Fully gets the blind, and that clutch does not come in favor of FlyQuest. It was still a nice little attempt, nice little push of how they're working on that control on that B-Link. It seems like it was read earlier on by Athena, as we just saw in that replay but there's still that extra layer coming out from this guys for pushing through and making sure that you're clearing all the sites as much as possible. But you're definitely seeing some heroic plays by the players of uh, FlyQuest here to get these picks. And it's right at the end, especially because they've been stacking right now. The Updraft trying to find something for Katarina doesn't do anything this time around. And, and the stack continues, right? Four players I've this time around trying. pushing. Nobody inside up close. Yeah. They have to black cap as well. 
Curveball's not going to do much either because the Nebula was popped. There's four players once again of FlyQuest just hiding behind this time around only with pistols. So the times they stack correctly, unfortunately, have weaker weapons and they want to fight towards the back of the spawn. A three versus one against Unstable with passive support from Lazy Lion and Katarina inside the pit. So Trailblazer spots the first one. Lazy Lion just staying inside the site on this setup that you have a triple formation on this uh, a site misu watching and covering the flank doesn't work out for these kills at least towards the spawn side it works out for dsg but in the end you know this clock is going to go off you know this spike's going to go in favor of dsg this round will go in favor of dsg as well as they're tapping on the spike hot hands are even going on the ground the 4k for unstable which allows for them to get an ult in FlyQuest's next gun round once again, that running back available. One of the ultimates, too, that you can get the easiest, uh, as we mentioned, a little bit early on. Got it, I believe, round two, round three. Was used for that one kill that we saw when the A hit was coming through. And now there's a possibility of seeing it again. A, a fly quest as well that has been playing in, in a way that is reminding me of, of what we've seen in the past couple of days for... Mm -hmm. You know, in the last chance qualifier from crew, where you see a lot of, of the plays being three, four players all together, trying to play more reactionary to what the hit is going to be like for the attacking team for this mm -hmm. time around for DSG. So uh, the, the question is, if this kind of play gets slowed down, where you fight a little bit more for that map control that early on FlyQuest has been losing. Now you see this timeout being called out by a Rubies. Uh, previously, actually, coaching to giving lessons there out with the the tsm organization uh now coming in as i'm assuming here at this point a trial as a head coach here for FlyQuest. i've been in the lab for quite a bit now understanding a little bit how dsg had been playing seems like FlyQuest or the team that's trying to be a little bit more proactive of where they think the hit's gonna happen from dsg there's been a lot of these moments where you're trying to find and get the stack without getting too much early information if not for their early pressure that they do here so this it's time around over. it seems from their position that they want to fight a little bit more quickly a little bit more aggressively towards this a side and there you go high tide yeah. guided light denying orb no retaliation though from dsg just on the other side of the high tie actually waiting for that flash is going to be a phoenix flash early on trying to get some value dota not Decides to go here. Oh, she she's looking to fight. Turns away from the flash, but unstable denies her the possibility again in the first blood. Trailers are then coming out, spotting that sky, forcing Idna Han to fall back for a bit, but she still has support here from Emily. Nice little cascade. Now double flash wasted quite early. And even a reckoning coming out too. But no! No deniability off the run it back. Unstable gets three in the round. Leaving Athena and Blue with the last two players remaining on a five versus two. If no kills come out yet, especially with this off angle by Katarina, well, I think I'm going to have to save now at this point for Emlu, unfortunately. The last one alive. Yeah, nothing else can be done. And, and Unstable uses both flashes, but it doesn't matter. Uh, with that aggressive position this time around for the defense, that we got to see again, especially with Dota not so up close and, and even Hand trying to get the support with the Guiding Light. You see kind of what their response is right away and aggressive. It doesn't allow the defense to back up just in time to go to our secret to protect themselves or, or try to fight back against Unstable. It, it, with an Unstable that has been playing a bunch of different agents uh, throughout yeah. this game changers we've seen the cypher we've seen the jet now we're seeing a little bit of the phoenix the euro i mean bringing absolutely everything to the table but i think this phoenix also gets to a completely different level really being the opener for the team to find this space early on and also bringing the possibility of the late Stay lurks the, the flanks that sometimes yeah. we see for the phoenix but yeah. everything right now has just been going to perfection for DSG. Yeah, this is something that it's a, a coach's dream pretty much to see players are able to shift to many different agents and not only sticking to like, oh, okay, I can play different agents. Oh, yeah, what agents? Oh, Reyna, Jet, you know, just all the duelists that you can name out of the book. But when you see that there's actually more flexibility in terms of flexing roles from duelist to Sentinel to controller, then it just gives an opportunity for Chris Young, the head coach, and even Lear, the yes. assistant coach, to actually cook a little bit more with the rest of DSG and find the success that they're currently getting so far. Uh, and at least this time around, since this timeout, though, Dendrite, you've seen this 
more you know aggression coming out from FlyQuest identifying that okay we might we do have the tools to be able to fight back against DSG, but we also have an opportunity to catch some players off guard. And this is Dodonut right here with the Bladestorm pushing up on middle. Won't hear any footsteps yet, so we'll potentially have to make a play soon. Oh, the timing here. Yeah, just spotted one right there. That was going to be unstable. And that might be Dodonut, a call, though. Yeah. He's waiting for it. Yeah, they speed up. They go to this B side, but now it's left. a lot different, right? Black was already on the side, ready. The Flash is trying to help out for the sentries in Katarina. And the call there, Two you see that the pivot moved towards the B side, allowed all of FlyQuest to stack up towards this B main. And look at that, three kills already flying through for the FlyQuest team. Advantage moving forward. Rifle still too strong though for DSG, leaving Athena by herself. Spike now, Planet Cloudburst leaving, only as a sheriff in her hand gets the wall bang on Kahana. And back to a 1v1, cannot finish the kill onto Katarina, who only need a one shot to fall. But it's still DSG that holds strong in that previous round, taking the lead six to one. 19 HP for Katarina, and we, we saw her off dropping, going right in, trying to find those picks after chaos was happening. But right at the end, she steps up, gets that kill, and continues this dominance for DSG. Four rounds in a row right now. And if like was though, it seemed like this story could have been different. Han answering right back, Jodan trying to do the same thing. Both of the, the players position to resolve. It was meant to be their round, but now they change it up. Operator, look at this positioning. Yeah, a great spot. One that's actually known exactly that. Exactly that. It's so known that the flash blinds her perfectly. And then you just saw Unstable swing outside of a Cloudburst to get that kill. At least it gets traded off for a bit. You did your best to try to anchor down. But unfortunately, with Athena falling, DSG has to plant now for long. You should I can pant it here very quickly. The flash is once again ready. One of the most annoying things about this composition is we've seen over and over again, trying to get themselves down, trying to get that space. But yeah, lockdown is going to be more than enough force the players here to back up. Yeah, force to back up and save on top of that. And it, I, I feel like it's been the story so far for FlyQuest. Uh, or at least for DSG, whenever it comes to, okay, we're going to storm it down and run it through. They drop the players quite early for FlyQuest, and then you don't give enough time for the team to really rotate across. But you've seen how good they've been when FlyQuest were able to, to grab that information in the mid-round to understand what that final hit is going to happen, which resulted into an almost eco win. But if it's not for that, and you're still playing into some sort of unknown in the darkness, not getting that information with your util or even your killjoy, you're just, it just seems like you're being surprised all the time. And that positioning that we saw early for Dota 2, it, it's kind of, you know, it, it's so common that people stop doing it so much, but because people stop doing it, you want to bring it, right? It's all those mental games, but it's still going to be one of those angles that gets cleared first. And so Dodona being shot down the Operator as well as going to be the Guardian and has this player. And now with the Viper's pit for Athena. Back of sight. Very early on and a push from B. Yeah. A push of B from a, on the defensive side. DSG just holding a default. This might be one of those moments where, again, I think you might still be playing into DSG's playstyle where if you spot the first player being Katarina now pushing forward, if that's going to force an early rotate, what DSG is currently doing is just trying to catch some players off a of rotate. And look at Athena slowly moving forward. As the contact comes in towards long B, she's peeking out towards this A sign, but might get caught. Both players now setting up. The gun's out, and boom, the sight's now open. Spike down A. And just that swing in time is just a trade. Athena goes down. And Unstable continues the ruling here on this map. It's a 4v4, though, the time 45 seconds. Oh! I don't know, up close with the Guardian, and it's enough. Yeah, that cancels out the double pump here that DSG was doing. Getting an open on the A side, but picking up the spike to go back towards B. <sighs> Dodonut still winning, has the heal. High Tide just covering her position. Just left. in this corner. A flash on the other end to confirm that somebody's close. Dodonut's getting ready for it. Just across on the other end as the High Tide comes down. The dash gets activated. The shots are missing for a bit, but it still avenges it on Han. Now leaving a solo player with the spike that's unstable coming in with the defuse. But with the defuse, you'll also have a run back left. so you are not out of the forest yet out of the, the woods for flyquest in this post plan
They're running back a big chance here, but getting that space is going to be the most crucial thing with a 1v3 doable, trying to get that space first to make it happen. Oh, she's going to hear all of this. They're going to hear all of this so far. But at least Emily clears that corner. So well done here for FlyQuest to identify all of these corners, making sure that they don't allow DSG to really catch them off guard in that rotation. And FlyQuest, they finally put the second one. They finally get the second round, and a big thing, right, when we've seen the aggression either towards mid, towards that B side, even a couple of times towards that A side early on for this defense, you see everybody pushing forward, they get that contact, they get that info, maybe the pick, and then everybody's backing up. This time around, Dota no just stay for a little bit longer, Enemy caught remaining. those two players completely unexpected, Hannah the same way. And for on save until that 1v3, just so difficult, even with that run it back. Now, we get to see the timeout for DSG. Mm -hmm. I like it too. You're not going to try to give any type of like early momentum for FlyQuest. As soon as they finally get their second round, it's like, okay, well, let's try to mitigate FlyQuest trying to steamroll a couple of rounds coming through because when you're looking at this composition on the attack, it's not going to be as easy to control these orbs as unless you want to do it on the A side. But you've mentioned it once we got into that pregame here, Dandriad. This is something that Cloud9 did in week number one with Zelsus on his Phoenix. And how did Loud really punish that in the later weeks when they faced off against each other? They just kept fighting the A side on the attack. And then they just stopped them and stopped them until and then forced pretty much Cloud9 to change their composition across. Yeah, but also when you when you look at FlyQuest on the other side, this composition is the one that we saw in America all the time, right? The, this double wall with the Viper and the Harbor. And with the changes, it feels like people are more likely to play the Astra that you see for Misu on, on yeah. DSG. So a, a composition that has also been red, this I think, when we go into the attacking side, you can expect that FlyQuest going to the B side quite a lot for these post plans. So uh, both of them kind of having their weaknesses, but a bit of balance as well for DSG that has given the, the results of seven round so far once again the flash coming through and it seems like this is where the running back comes in once again oh but they want to fight it back for flagless look at that well done by dodo nuts but misu is just behind a trade off with two more so an even tally i've got your child. actually made that even a player advantage i forgot it was a running back before yeah and the seeker is coming out too to try to get the info on the attack the plant comes down hannah gets the pick onto m luo as flagless are trying to gain more better positioning to allow the retake to happen, and unfortunately, it's just Athena left on the four versus one. It's so chaotic into these early rounds on the A side, like you mentioned, with the Phoenix too, with the running back. He knew it was coming. He knew it was a matter of time. But in the meantime, DSG is just getting all these positions, like you see from Hannah towards mid, trying to push and make sure that the push from Art on the defense is not going to happen. So that right. immediately gets denied. It leaves Athena all by herself. Yeah. The game plan was there, and I, I could see that coming now from Ruby, where after that timeout, it was probably like, hey, we, we cannot give them that respect. We had to fight back and not give them that space. And when you see that swing coming out and stopping the Phoenix, when you see that push coming back towards Art, not allowing any type of like late lurks to happen. But sometimes at the end, when you got players that are just shooting the way that they are, unstable at 13 and 5, Katarina, the star duelist for this team, who's currently playing under the weather, the weather rather and still at 10 and 7 is just very hard to go up against and you have to now for FlyQuest. You got four ultimates available. That Viper's Pit has been, Athena has been holding on to for now a couple rounds of Seekers as well. That lockdown, you think of those three ultimates alone, they should be and they could be the difference maker for this round. Number 11 as FlyQuest would like to get those two more rounds, get it to a 4 8 half going to their attacking side, but those resources are going to be needed for the round. Yeah. It was potentially just our hero rifle for Athena, but we want to we want to force with this because Dota also has a Blade Storm at the ready. So a decent buy that you have overall on top of that ultimate to stack on, uh, with it. You're hoping here for FlyQuest that you could turn it around. At least salvage a couple of these last rounds here on your defensive half. This position with Katarina early on. This yeah. is what she's able to do so many times. Just sneaky jet every single time. But the killed you, you till the only one up close towards that A side killed you, playing all the way towards that backside. And the ultimates yeah. have yet to be used. 
Yeah, I mean, Amalua just really wants to hold his back, right? You already see the alarm bar being placed towards that back of the site, too. The goal is to get that lockdown out on the pulse plant and not allow the attackers from pushing through towards Secret. So as the Seekers are coming out on the other end, closing in now, making sure that we're clearing out towards middle. And actually, Amalua's moving there alone with the Sheriff, and that's lockdown gone! That was the key. That was massive. Envelope going down. The lockdown no longer available for the post plan. The plan that they had early on and unstable as well. Going massive three kills for the Phoenix. And looking for more hand right in between the fight. Yeah, what can you really do in the end? Can't even leverage that hit. As Athena made it into the site. Yes, of course, trying to do the heroic play on that side. And it just becomes a whole roster of FlyQuest dropping down. Last and DSG up at nine. Unstable, just a demon right now with the Phoenix, doing absolutely everything. And, and DSG actively looking for the space, actively looking for the space, giving no no sense of comfort for what you see on the defense of FlyQuest. Again, that pick on Emlo, massive to work yeah. out. And she only had a sheriff then. Don't yeah. No support to come through to even if she made it towards that back where she could actually activate the lockdown. How do you offend it with just a sheriff? You needed some bodies with that if she's going to move there alone. That said, yeah. DSG trying to work towards this B side. Three players at least holding on this end as we get a fake flash. Triple swing with that. Katarina spotting the first one but dashing away. And at the same time, the pick coming out towards the A side. You're trying to flush players now from DSG into the utility of Mluo to get that mid-round information. Placing swap. This kills your utility the Viper as well. The Viper spit right onto the A side. It'll be very strong. And as the info that Katarina was able to get early on, it seemed like that was going to be the plan for yeah. DSG. But once again, slowing down, going towards mid, going towards Link. Kill Joe up close here. This is good. The attacker is pushing in to break the turret. At the same time, FlyQuest are still reading the map quite well. We'll have to understand a little bit more what the pivot's going to be when the KG utility is going to get broken up. And instead of going towards that B link where there was a lot of pressure there before, DSG now moves down towards Art. Alarm bot will spot them now. Nano Swarm to delay a little bit more, allowing now FlyQuest to rotate from the B side, but they are so far away. Athena has to come up huge now in the back of the site, and it's just a right click in her face, and the pit falls. Katarina just looking for where Athena was going to be. Neo is probably one, two players max into this Viper Spit, gets taken down with a right click, and that's a way to start off the round once again. Now with the lockdown, the possibility, the last round, Having to make this one work out. Ah. So they're trying to lock down to push away the A control, but look at where the spikes planted in the back of the A site, and that's where the rest of the players of DSG are currently holding. Katarina just trying to do as much. Going for a flash here, trying to get a kill before the lockdown gets used, and yeah, I mean, it's a run it back to get some picks. What do you do at this point? No matter what couple of kills, there's still the spike that's gonna go off. DSG takes the half at 10. Switching sides. Double digits on the first half for DSG with a pearl that they're showing us. It's a little different from last time around, but yeah. it, it seems very solid. You see the many different layers of how this initial execution is going to work out, how they adapt in the mid round. You even see the post plan even for, for the last round, right? And something that you point out that the lockdown being available, they get that space where uh, their spawn. Yeah. And with the lockdown, you get all that space and make sure that you can still go for the swing, go for the kills. Very uncomfortable for precision that FlyQuest found themselves hey. in every single round. Hey. Now with the chains on the attacking side, but just such a massive lead hey. now for DSG. Yeah. But this is definitely a map where you could actually get a good comeback with good utility. And there's that dash to try to catch on the stable off guard. Still manages to it's land two, two kills before, but Athena does the same thing. So trading it off and avenging her teammates. Now FlyQuest trying to move towards the A site, but because Athena was heavily damaged with it, not Han, by the way, she pulls out the regrowth and we cut noise to try to re-hit somewhere later. Still hand seven HP for the sky. No chance for the 3v3 to be playing. Very careful as Spike attempts to get planted as the space attempts to be given on the A side. Athena, good for three, oh, actually. Off. There's a chance. 
very good chance. Even the flash to make sure that we clear towards the flower pot. So it's going to be a safe plant for a long. And again, Athena, yes, getting that third kill was all thanks to that utility being held by Itnan Han. So picking up these assists from the first initial flash, then the trailblazer for that third kill. Now M. Luo, 1v1 against Misu, wins that one as well. Getting a little bit of the late birthday buff from Zeppa. <laughs> now Hannah's on a three versus one. Two players are low on HP though, there's still a chance. Athena would have to be the first one to swing out, but Hannah is trying to move oh. up instead. And it turns out to be a beautiful crossfire in the end. And this is a great moment to start your comeback here on the second half of FlyQuest. Get the, get the pistol there, get that space early on, get the last couple kills, make that crossfire impossible to win for Hannah. And with that, that is the third round of your fourth fly quest. As they go into uh, what you would expect is the, the best side for the for this composition, for the post ones. But the question is how these are going to look. Are they going to look like the heavy B post blend? And are, is DSG going to give them that space? DSG against Van Lin. This is something that on Pro they were denying every single time. Every single opening pick was going their way. And that was massive for how the late round was going to look like. Yastra playing so far back to our secret. Walls up. Okay, trying to isolate the front of the site. Yeah. Katarina was pushing up towards his B side with this Bucky, so they're trying to gamble on a Fly Quest hit towards his B side. But you see here from Fly Quest, dividing that site from that high tide, using the Trailblazer to clear towards the front. And then they're actually walking through to fight towards the B link. So really trying to catch players off guard, off the rotate with the weapons that you have. But this is giving a chance for a star player like Unstable to rotate across and meet up here with Misu. Thankfully, they only have classics to work with. So this is still very doable here for FlyQuest. Yeah, and on the other side, you got two rifles from the investment here. The, the Spectre as well and the two ghosts. So pretty good balance across the entire team with Dodonode and Emily. Having the strongest ones for this post plan as yeah, the spike gets planted here, positioning here towards Art. Yeah, this is all very nice. Waiting for the cycle of the second high tide to come up to now split the back of the site, flash behind to see if anybody's playing behind default and now confirms an open site. And while they were sneaking their way out towards art, you allowed M. Lua to place all of that killjoy utility to get lay information. Now you're just in a great spot for a quad swing off a spike tap on the A site, but Boys now it off. seems as though I'm just seeing the same story as that previous round, except for Itna Han really trying to chase down these kills. But meets oh boy. a massive amount of leads from that Bucky. <laughs> and she drops. At least she gets an ult orb. That's what we wanted. And now the tap on to the spike. Yeah, everybody's going to fall in the end. But I was going to say it was almost the same, almost the same storyline as we see on the first half with DSG. Uh, looking to just die from the spike, not allowing here any of the orbs to get picked up by FlyQuest on a pulse plant. Yeah, now we get to see for fly quest but it feels like when you have the bucky you want to go in you want to get the kills with the bucky as katarina was doing gets one then end up getting taken down by that spike going off that gives the fourth round now for fly quest this is where things get interesting because again that buy that we sell for fly quest right before is the two rifles mm -hmm. investing into one more for this one in disguise Placing attempting grenade. to do a little bit of the same here a heavy buy immediately and we'll having to back up give it that space because you're on a bonus. Yes, there were a couple of hero rifles, but you have a ghost and a specter to work with on your bonus round here. I respect the fact that FlyQuest wants to give up that orb away from Unstable, thinking that what the game plan is going to be. So good job for M. Luo to lurk and identify that. Now allowing FlyQuest to rotate over this B site, rush into B site, where still one player is waiting here. It's Hannah. Now towards the back with this Phantom. Waiting for her teammates to rotate Spike here planted. as the spike will go down at least for FlyQuest. Not planted in a good spot, so all of FlyQuest have to play inside the site. Hannah about to get oh. backstabbed here by Dodo Nut. That evens up Italia. Three on three. Lazy Lion on a rotate across. Athena's gonna hear these footsteps. Lazy Lion has two flashes to work with. Athena unfortunately falls, so you double up here on Heaven! And Misa wins that fight. Up to M. Lua. The tap on the first spike, even holding it. She does win that first fight against her opponent, but low HP. It's too late here for the Nanoswarms to come out. The fuse will come across. 
and DSG only two rounds away of winning this first map. And getting that space, the way that it happened early on for, um, for what we saw in FlyQuest, it was DSG and it was actually Katarina, the only one completely left alone towards this B side, that information towards Link, uh, allows for Hannah to make that rotation, get that support early on, and it's just trades to close out the round right at the very end. And we'll try to get some timing, doesn't work out as Spike gets a fuse. And DSG, they get to 11, looking really good. Even with the buy, only a bulldog. Oh, no. Katarina, <laughs> once again with the shotguns here. Oh, we want to fight this. Deny that orb, you're one away from the ult, or one kill away. And it's a double push up. There's that ult available for Unsable, who decides to fall back under heavy pressure now by Dodonut. Moving up with Athena, winning all of these fights! But there's still one more person holding the enemy lines, holding the back lines on the defense. That's going to be Hannah. And as you're low on HP here for Dodonut, you decide to pull back. And worth the mid map where Katarina, you mentioned it, Dendriad, she has the judge to work with at the B Link doors. Waiting for the chance, waiting for the opportunity. The question is if the opportunity is actually going to take place up close with Katarina. Oh, yes. There's an M here. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes, you're playing a judge. Player standing. But thankfully, it's the one on low HP that peaks first. So an instant trade yes. happens and an instant rotate out from Anna from the Locking A to fire. the B site. Nice little plant going out for long. Two nanoswarms still available now for Mluo, who spike places planted. it up on that spike. And you're in a good spot now here for FlyQuest to win the pulse plant. A 1v2 Hanna, full HP though. Mluo very low, 31. Gonna have to playing this one together and already so far away is Mluo for it. Position towards long as the spike gets planted mm -hmm. for it. And Mluo is actually gonna handle it just fine towards Hulse. Taking down, taking down Hanna. Getting one more round hey, here for fly quest. It's only life or death. Just the the chaos once again towards the beginning of the round on the A side and Dodona answering right back. This is why we highlighted this player early on. I mean, every single time and every single team that Dodona has been part of, Dodona has been the topic of conversation Agreed. on this duelist role. Agreed. Agreed. And we've seen a lot of the rays. We've seen a lot of the jet. Let's choke them. And it's always consistent. That, that is what's keeping FlyQuest on this game. And in those moments where Dodona can shine, you need a players, other players to step up to the plate, and they're able to do it so far. So still a very complete roster that you have for FlyQuest. And even looking at this round, look at the respect coming out from the defensive side. DSG letting now FlyQuest pick it up this orb, allowing the Reckoning to be ready this time around. DSG very happy to play the retake as they have their run it back, but... That said, they are also on an eco. Again, another a Bucky. Oh, we're looking for some sort of trap now. Reactionary on the A Trailblazer. And then it's going to be a pinch towards the mid side. There's that Trailblazer coming out. Yikes. Nice little hit by M. Luo. Nice little pinch on top of that from FlyQuest. Guaranteeing now a site being open as the Reckoning goes towards the back of the secret side. So leaving every single, not leaving a single stone unturned rather. Fly quests are in a pulse plan on a four versus two. Katarina gets a rifle here, but so difficult. Low in HP. Hannah playing a completely different part of the map as well. One enemy remaining. Spotted. Yeah, gonna get taken down. Katarina with the rifle, with the blade storm as well, and a one v four. The time yeah. running out as well. Spotted uh, by the guiding light. Yeah, let herself be known that you're there. This is an eco coming out here for DSG, so try to force him out, trying to force the damage through. And try Wait. to catch the player. No, 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 it's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> There's no way that was gonna happen. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you were trying to lure them out, right? That's why Katarina was like still letting herself getting hit by the flashes, hoping that the, that fly quest is gonna move forward, that she could drop weapons on her yeah. uh, against her opponents here, because you know the economy is very low for fly quest. Yeah, not gonna play around it too much. As it was a light buy coming through for DSG, only the Bucky in the hands of Katarina. A Bucky that I feel like we just never see. Yeah. Ever. If you think of shotguns, I feel like that's the last one that comes to mind. But Katarina, every single time she gets a good for one, though not enough for the round as FlyQuest slowly trying to make that comeback happen. Two ultimates coming through. The Viper Spit gonna be here with the early contest for the attacking side. And again, Boys, only off. Katarina on this side. Calling for help. Hannah should be the first one to get here. 
This pit still instills spear for me if I'm watching fly quests on the pulse plan if they're gonna use it when Unstable has that running back available to just kind of clear that open. So if that happens and everybody falls, then you're basically gonna be sitting out in the open. This time around though, with early information coming out from the Trailblazer, will we use the running back proactively for mid control instead? First flash, nice shot. And there you go, after the first contact, trying to clear some more. Mizu meanwhile holding the defense up towards Art dropping Dodo Nut. The Lurk is on the attack on that B side, and unfortunately, every single one of this worked the map on, on extremities. DSG has never really rotated anybody to cross nowhere, and they've been remaining. winning all of these duels. 30 seconds left. Just once again, leaving Emily all by herself, gets taken out with a 30k from Katarina. That's 12 on the map for DSG point. with a point as well that we've seen across map on the attacking and defensive side for FlyQuest is uh, the way that Emuo is playing and trying to catch some timings but it seems like it's always getting caught a little too early right before the rest of the team makes that play to enable this Kilji to get that space very very late into the round and it has been denied over and over again that is just the space that DSG has been taking so proactively denying this killjoy to find success yeah. into the lay round as it is the last time out here for FlyQuest. Yeah, you talk about hard for the killjoy to activate here for FlyQuest, but I think, if I'm not mistaken, Hannah got a pick on that last uh, round, which then technically should mean that she has a lockdown ready this time around too. So, yes, very much an important timeout coming out for FlyQuest and what you're trying to muster up in what economy that you have left, it's going to be still very hard to come up against what you have for retake potential. I, I think now at this point, DSG could play with full confidence, and when you're playing with full confidence and Katarina's got Bladestorm, you could already start dwindling down and weakening FlyQuest's attempt to actually take control of a, a site currently in, in round number 19. Which is uh, what you've seen for DSG in so many rounds, right? Playing with no fear into, into the early plays that we see with the flashes as well, with Unstable going in, with Katarina going for the uh, double updraft, trying to find something. We've seen this constantly yeah. for the squad, and now when it's just one run away, you're expected, expecting to see a lot more of this. Well, there's a Viper Spit once again for Athena, and there's still a buy coming through with the Seekers. And a chance here, if the post plant is possible, a space has been given here on the B side. Yeah. Because again, very confident that you can play with the lockdown on a retake, which also will chess match win that against I've got your a pit trail. out from Athena. So now, thankfully, here with the Seekers, we're going to try to gain space on top of it. No flashes to support. Finally, it comes out good for a couple of trades, but still, DSG takes the upper hand. And unfortunately, it's not going to be the lockdown that's going to get picked off. So it's still up for grabs here for DSG to retake the site until Dodonut just did what she did right there, getting two picks across. Now Athena okay to just basically stay inside the pit. I think she's outside of the radius too, though, off the lockdown. So that's a great spot. And the last two players moving in for DSG. Now DKing inside the pit. A walk through. A nice little uh, hit, actually, from Dodonut through the long range of the pit. And then Athena right there for the last one. And just standing outside of the radius of that lockdown was good enough here for FlyQuest to win this round. And barely outside, right? Right in the corner to be able to deny and to make sure that it doesn't get detained. So a FlyQuest that stays alive because of it. But this guy is on the other side also getting a couple of the ultimates off their own and maybe a little bit of a heavier star because there's a sight. Putting the turret towards Art. Gonna be the first contact up close and Katarina with the blade storm too. Spots one. And she's the one that gets damaged. Force the fall back, but inching on the other end by Art. Dota not scores first, but at least against Unstable. Dropping a key player for DSG early in round number 20. As now FlyQuest not really reacting out of that. They've done this a couple of times before on their attack. Getting a kill, cutting noise, looking to re-hit, yeah. looking to see if there's going to be some extremity pushes out from DSG. And as they all pivot towards this B sign, still have enough utility to clear out all of these corners. The read is good, good as well for DSG after getting that info early on towards lane three players once again position 
very proactively on this B site. Gonna be clearing up close, nothing. He spotted everybody behind, everybody towards Halls here for Katarina. Scary. Trailblazer are in the back and dash in. The right click still good enough. What? Was good enough falls. But Elise, I believe, moving inside the cold. The Gulag battle in the back of the site. Lazy Line, though, answers back. Misu as well. Seekers to spot the last players moving into B site. And a Trailblazer to confirm the position of where M. Luo's at. Hannah's looking for her timing, but too little, too late. Now the attacker's killjoy is going to come out with 18 seconds left on the clock. An opportunity to push forward and plant the spike, but you will have to commit towards the B site pl uh, spike plant, rather. 10 seconds left. And it's going to happen at least for now. Misu already running back in. The first contact, M. Lua stepping up to the plate. Placing Evening up the tally on two versus two. Cosmic divide for the attempt of a retake. Alarm bot on one end, where M. Lua could actually hold at least the backside of the spawn. Up towards the back of the B site. M. Lua wins that one back to a one versus two. Swinging it across the pendulum swings back in favor of FlyQuest. As heroic plays comes out from uh, Athena and M. Luo. Massive play there right at the end. But the Cosmic Divide playing around it, playing for the cross early on. M. Luo going for the swing, getting that pick. And, and both of them getting those timings perfect for the 2v2 to go the way of FlyQuest. Massive in that kind of situation with the Cosmic Divide. So these guys that turned the numbers almost make them their own and now get... An attempt to get that control once again. FlyQuest from a 2-10 half to 8-12. And it continues Spike once again. A. The aggression on the A orb to try to deny an orb for unstable. Works out for a couple of kills, at least on the lower buy from DSG, as you see the Sperthy come out. And even look at that. Katarina's Toxins full rotating towards this B side. She's guessing Toxins that FlyQuest is doing one of those cut noise off the initial aggression and rotate back towards the B site. And by the looks of it, with 105 left on the clock, she's reading this perfectly. Gonna depend so much on the first pick for Katarina to make this round even potentially doable for this side of DSG. Katarina Hanna, the two most experienced players that DSG have. All up to them for this round to make it. The read was right. Yeah. Starting to look dangerous. Even Katarina is pitting back to the right spot. Even that Nano Storm confirms it now. Thankfully, though, for FlyQuest, a wall comes up. Snake Bite. Gonna get decayed a little bit here by. 30 seconds left. The Snake Bite down to 10 HP. Even forced to dash away quite early. This is huge right now for FlyQuest to at least salvage this round. Nice little pick there. Katarina falls. No down. value as Hannah drops. Edna Han with two nice little headshots. Now on a two versus one. Spike yet to get planted. A tap onto it. A double swing across. Beautiful play by FlyQuest. As they're only three rounds away to be able to push this to overtime. And in those kind of situations, that's once again when you see FlyQuest shining the brightest. That 1v2 had to be closed. They go for that swing right at the same time. Shot down the play. Shot down Hannah. And Katarina almost had had the play just ready. Being decayed a little bit after it gets spotted, having to swing. That's the information that Fike was needed to shut her down. Make that 2v2 impossible. And we continue to see more and more of this map of Pearl. Again, the 210 half is how it was at the beginning. And Fly Quest on the attacking side definitely proving and almost looking like a different team. The game plan. Very well done, but now contesting this insight early on, something that we haven't seen much of. Passive play for Unstable for sure. So DSG changing their game plan around. Forfeit in the orb, allowing FlyQuest to get it. And you want to pressure back once again towards mid control. Potentially playing the retake this time around. I mean, look how passively even Katarina is playing her position with Misu. All of FlyQuest though. Right there. They're just waiting for a last right second there. hit off potentially this reckoning. It's and that you said it's gonna be perfect. That's yeah, why they have yet. to play so far back, yeah. Already facing close. Looking through, it's gonna be a high tide just putting off split things off first, rather. We've seen this before. 
The split back for our control, the reckoning towards back of secret. 30 seconds left. It's just a picture perfect trial. repeat of what they did there on that second round. Now there is the Seekers on top of that to support, but Emblua cannot catch Unstable as she was watching for that flanker. All of the players now are PSG. About to move in from Flowers and Secret. Dodonut looking for the hero play. Spider it across, but gets traded right back by Lazy Lion. Back towards the church. No prayers answered. Another player of FlyQuest now falls. Emily and Athena looking for a clutch once again. It works out. It's a one versus one. The Poison Orb's about to drop, and Emily still has a Cascade and a High Tide to work with. A jump across, a tap on the spike for the second time, the counting, the shot, and another round! Clutch by Emily and Athena! Once again, making it happen at the very end of the round. A fly quest that gets Can traded spot, when the KOs start to happen, when that spike gets planted. A DSG waiting for that Reckoning to be over to get that retake. And in that 1v1, it just works for FlyQuest. Second time out here for DSG. But what a round once again. A FlyQuest that is slowly waking up to compared to what we saw early on. And when it comes to those clutches with the 2v2s that they always seem to end up as. They've been answering in time. Yeah. And this is going to be a much important timeout for DSG, of course. The last one that you have. At least in a server, both of their team, uh, both of the teams rather, exhausting their timeouts. Yeah. What you're learning out of this so far here from DSG's side is you're realizing now that FlyQuest, they're not really looking for too many of these plants to fight towards the back of secret. That seems to have been the new meta, but it's more trying to work back towards art. How do you read this? How do you want to take early control here of that mid side of how FlyQuest currently is executing? Thank you. Post plant uh, as well, the ones that we've seen just so annoying for DSG to, to work with, to work around. Yeah. When when we talked about the first half, we talked about the Phoenix, we talked about the Jet, the, the space that you can take with these ultimates as well. But when it's the defense and the situation is Katarina was, I mean, we saw how far back they were playing. Phoenix for unstable. Attempting to do the same, trying to work with those flashes, but it's always just the trades, and it's always, again, those 2v2s. How many of those have we seen, and how many of those have gone the way of FlyQuest? It seems like at least three on this half, and that's what have turned things around. Mm -hmm. You definitely need this so far now for DSG to, of course, try to push this into the second map early. Their map pick, by the way, against FlyQuest. And if it happens here in the second map, of course it will happen. Second map is going to be on split where we've mentioned it before here on the desk. The, the analysts have mentioned before, actually, Dan Dryan. You and I have yeah. mentioned <laughs> that one <Flight laughs> quest have been really good on split. So they're trying to actually bring this and push this to the cross to, to, to the finish line right now would be a great opportunity for FlyQuest to get that confidence to close it on a 2-0. But with with the DSG that that seemed like they just had the read right at the beginning. Yeah. Ten rounds. It, it seems like this map was gonna be over and just maybe the pistol, maybe right after. But no, it's a fly quest that is showing us the the fly quest th that we know, the core of this team that we yeah. know and we've known for a long time. It, it was almost a little bit weird seeing DSG getting away with those rounds, getting away with those clutches in the first half, and now. Uh, Flag was a lot stronger at Athena. I feel like was the key to to change things around. The the first rounds that we started seeing for Flag was it was Athena with a two K with a three K. Even though it was not necessarily a, that utility that was being the most proactive from this Viper, right? We were waiting for for a Viper spit a couple rounds, and then we started seeing kind of how the, the whole play is intent is intended to go for the squad on the attacking side yeah and changing it up too they have a massive playbook that they've shown us oh yeah agreed in the playbook that we see currently on pearl here on the side of dsg finally it seems as though the chapters are being read by FlyQuest. Crashing. and they can can they move this to the prologue right now to push us into overtime between these two teams thank you for your patience chat we had a disconnect by one of the players in the server and now resuming it here. DSG in the lead by two rounds.
only needing one singular round to try to, or at least to win the first map. We're looking for a trap play, a contact play at middle. Misu, the one that's going to be the first contact, and then a double flash and a triple swing. But all this is all for a gamble, right? All of FlyQuest working towards this A side, and when they work towards B at the beginning, should be an open site for them to plant. If all of DSG does here is just set up for this flood that they want to try to do towards middle. A lockdown for Hannah, one away, but it's still... What a rising! Taken with the Stingers with the Marshall for Katarina to try to get this one going, to try to close out the map right now, and it's still going to be a space to clear scary. with the util for Art. This is so scary. Okay, well, at least the first flash did come out. The guy that light went out on defense. Or right, shut us down the attack, rather. Left. And I thought at some point we were seeing that strat once again, Dan, where they're going to move towards Art, and they had a triple stack there, too. Yeah. So a perfect read on an eco, but FlyQuest, well, they decide to go for that meta that we talked about before. Plat, fight or towards secret. secret. Exactly. But they still have Confirmed. the first casualty, FlyQuest, that is. Salvage now as Emily gets the pick onto Katarina. A double push towards the back of the spawn. And that's beautiful flash coming through. Fully blinded updraft coming across, but Dodonok cannot save her life. One enemy but at least has the information of where the last player of DSG is now standing. Hannah with the stinger, chased down by the corner, backstabbed in the end. And FlyQuest could potentially do it, needing one more round. And we have extra innings. Insane how the attacking side shows for both of the teams with the post plan that we actually saw for DSG with three players positioned over secret waiting uh, for the swing of two, three, even the flash for the Phoenix, not enough there to answer. And now Katarina trying to th take things into her own hands, an operator Let's for go. the jet on the defensive side. The, the Killjoy set up heavy on this B side too, Get changing just way. a little bit, trying to make sure that it is enough to avoid this overtime and Flyco is going right in. Oh yeah. But on a defense, Seekers to enable somebody like Unstable to run it back and a lockdown. You have to eliminate these players. But at least for the lockdown perspective on this B side, it's super passive. DSG once again looking to play the retake. Hat on the top of heaven. And FlyQuest identifies that, so they're trying to regain that space. Black now coming down. A pit coming through as well. And this time, there is no hiding around the radius of a lockdown being pushed out here on the defense. In a 5v5, something that we haven't seen for these post plans in a while. We get to see a little bit more of the running back growing oh. right in. Unstable the timing for the flash. Cancel right away. Nebula is up. The walls, the lineups are all good for FlyQuest. We're going into overtime. 12 to 12. And there's the overtime. way this is how things turn around for both of the teams. 10 and 2 on the halves. And an overtime to determine it all. We already saw how good both of the teams can be on the on the attacking side. It feels like we could just go back and forth, back and forth between them to, to see who's going to close it out. Placing yeah. oh, but again, I mean, the, the post plan just so clean. And it dependent on Katarina trying to stay and try to stay on side on that B side for a little bit longer. But the operator for that retake and the snake bite that we saw towards saying force her back, force uh, the lockdown to be the opening play for them. And it just... Once again, traded and taken down by the side of FlyQuest. 12 to 12, the first overtime today. Lots of flashes across a dash four from Godona instead. Unfortunately, she's the first to fall. Attempt to deny the orb being picked up. The game plan still stays very similar for both of these teams. Not too much mid control on the defense. And as I say that, this is actually the first time that I see Katarina pushing down a little bit more towards mid. Holding on to it, waiting for the rest of the team as well. But Flyquest was also looking for this space on it. Wallbangs, dash activated, and through the nebula gets the pick. Sneak bite on the ground, but no trade off. So a two player advantage now make that even three for DSG. Hidden on Han trying to answer back. About to get pushed back by four players of DSG. An opportunity. Yeah. Can she get it? Nope. I thought so that was, uh, yeah, no limit of surprise there, but it is definitely difficult. 
with everybody else as well. Leaving Emulo all by herself, herself for this clutch. 1v4. It seems like we've seen this one again, but no chance of saving. Having to go right in. Left. Having to take this fight. Into his halls. Not connecting. That is 13 for DSG, but again, this is the attacking side that we saw for DSG now. Sides. We gotta see Flyquest answering right back. Yeah. I mean, you can see outside of the aggression from the A orb, it's been very more reactive from both of these teams playing on a defense, which then allows here the attack to work the map a little bit more. Here, an operator for Katarina. We only here. saw in the last round of the half, and, and we didn't even get to see much of it as Katarina went down and it was forced to play towards Link. Now bringing this up. Interesting cloudburst there, just to try to avoid the flash. Turns around the corner, and now you hear it. Now you see it. The dash away from Godona, though. Of course, on a reload, Godona moves in with the shorty. And that smoke is not going to allow for her to pull away. Four on four. Emlua watching that flank, but pushing through, overextending. Gets information on two players. A reheal then coming out now from Lazy Lion. As Unstable gets the pick, but at least we get the spike find out. Planted. In a 4v3, once again, number is benefiting the side of DSG on the defense. This is what we were waiting for before the spike, yeah, planted. And three of the players pushing all the way from long to make this one work out. Lisa staying behind. It's not really planted for you for FlyQuest, right? It's all wall bangs. Trying to do heroic plays here. First flash, beautiful kill by Hitnan Han. Second flash coming out. Another two players fully blinded. And Hitnan Han just did everything by herself. Seekers find the last one. The spray transfer on to the second kill. Back to a one versus one. But there's only four bullets. There's no time. And FlyQuest moves this into a second overtime. I swear, it's just been Switching like this sides. every single time. Over you see time. DSG, they go for the retake. They start getting those kills. It seems like they're going to close it out. And yet, it is FlyQuest once again to answer right back. Things, cha things change around just a little bit with Katarina, with that operator getting the first one. It felt like that second one was almost necessary to give that round to the squad. Miso also had to wait for such a long time to allow the rest of her team to move all the way to go for that lurk, to go right behind as the spike got planted and the time was not enough, not playing for her side, the kills as well. And we get to see another overtime. Give it all to me. I'll take all the overtimes needed here. We're in for a treat. We've been witnessing a great matchup so far between these two teams. A fly quest is looking for a late hit on this A side and hopefully this time around. We'll spot our corners, but curveball's already ready. There's the first contact. Big flash coming through. And instantly, this is looking to be DSG's round. I'm very hungry for those kills. And um, all third players getting taken down. Again, Katarina, this is what she does every single time. She's not going to be the, the entry on the A side. Going to be staying towards that mid position towards Link, waiting for those mistakes to happen for Flyquest to punish them, to take them down. Lockdown denied. Emlo 1v5. Should be the round here for DSG. As Emlo, yeah, gets taken down by the Phoenix, but unstable. And it's a flawless. Is this Switching what is going to take that flawless match point to be the second to last round for DSG? The defense for both of them have been so difficult. Yeah. And the practice is good, but they're always forgetting this player behind the boxes of the A long. And either it's been as much for DSG as it at, as has been for FlyQuest, but this time around, it's DSG getting that with that type of trap play. It might be the, the final nail here that, that's going to close up that, gas, that gasket and you're going six feet under and moving into split because getting a flawless in a round like that and this type of momentum at, at this type of stakes, you're going to need this timeout to just recuperate a little bit more of the spank you just got on that trap play. It also felt, it feels like DSG, they know the situation, right? They know how good fly quests are on split. I mean, we've seen clutches for this team. We've seen what 
the, the game plan is on split. So it is trying to secure this map no matter what it takes, no matter how many overtimes it takes, but trying to take it down right in the next one. With Unstable Catering is stepping up massively, but also, I mean, the support that Lazy Lion has been giving with those guiding lights, with the info early on. Let's to see go. how reactionary this defense this time around is going to look like. Three players stacked towards this A side once yeah. again. Yeah. It's the op too. The op is out. The op does not connect, but at least Lazy, Lazy Lion's there for the support. A one for one. Katarina forced to fall back now towards the A side, but we'll still get the heal. Zareed was Feeling correct. Getting the op out once again. DSG wanted to shift this towards the Boxes A side in case down. they were afraid of an op on the B side. But it's only good for that one kill. Athena was looking for some sort of alert play towards his B site. They're just going to have to cut noise for a bit. Maybe try to waste this utility from the Killjoy that's currently being placed towards B Link and Art. And that's where you're working it so far here for FlyQuest. Oh, Katarina's so close. Beat it all the way around after finding the, the first kill with the rest of the squad with the three players that we saw on the A site. Immediately goes for the call on B and finds a pick with the Operator. I thought it was a lineup on top of that. And even a flash doesn't do enough. Pulse range with the shorty. Jeez, Athena then finally gets the kill into Katarina. Now the last player standing is going to be Athena as well. Looking to clutch a three versus one. That flawless round we saw before might be it. 30 seconds. The wall bank first. The Trailblazer are coming out. Does not work for that kill. As Misu allows DSG to finally win the first map 15-13. 15, 13, really going a distance right away for our first game off today, our first map off today between FlyQuest and DSG. But DSG closed it out. It took longer than we expected, <laughs> right? After the 10 to half, it definitely took longer. It went all the way to overtime. Took that defense to, to change the game plan a little bit more, to position Katarina in those corners that are enable her for success more to get her the, the operator kills the shorty kills that we saw right at the end and that's what it took that's yeah. kind of the, the sense of confidence again that it felt like ESG needed to move into the second map uh, as we know that the pick for FlyQuest like you said he took some heroic plays and also an op from Katarina to star player to step up and rotate that around in that final round to allow here DSG to win the first map until we move now on to split. But before we do that, we do have to pay some bills. So you're tuned into the Verizon Valorant Game Changers and after the break, your analysts, Van Silly and Dan Dryad will present map number two. Red Bull gives you wings. 